I'm a veteran. I've done six years in the Navy. Um, before you went, I'm homeless. Hang out here at the library, use the, the Wi-Fi, the charging, and the, the warmth sometimes. Former nurse, former nurse's aide, former gang member, uh, former prisoner convict. Homeless uh, by chance and not by choice. I think that's another thing I didn't realize before working here is that, you know, unfortunately, if you're walking by maybe someone experiencing homelessness, it's like, oh, look away, or, you know, there's just these, like, things that our society does now. It's like, look away or just walk a different direction. This program is part of the My Library Keeps Me Healthy grant-funded program that started in the Austin Public Library a year ago. It, it brings a face to uh, our resources. I mean, I think right now when we deal with uh, the homeless population, the only resource we give them is uh, pamphlets or we tell them to call 211 and they can provide service. Well, they don't have phones, how are they gonna call 211? So what Mayor Bell does is he's here to provide a service and provide the resources here and they could, someone they could talk to, they could, someone they could trust and communicate and know that someone's actually working for them. What I've seen is people will walk in with all their belongings, two, three bags full of um, clothing, um, some food, and um, everything. <laughs> like, everything. That is everything. That I've seen people leave their belongings outside, but they worry that their belongings will be stolen. Um, so when when somebody is really travels with all of their possessions as a matter of course. Um, for them to, you know, it's, it's kind of essentials that they have. They can't carry everything. I've seen that it only takes a couple weeks to get a mental disability from not sleeping. You can be a very functioning person but have had a crisis that knocks you down, knocks you over, and then you've lost your apartment and then you lose the car and now you're losing everything else. People who don't you know, have a place or are squeezed both ways. I mean, you can buy food without paying sales tax, but you can't store it anywhere. So you really are only gonna get as much as you can eat. And then, um, so yeah, it would behoove a lot of people to reduce the stuff that they have, me included. I got a bag of groceries in my backpack and that's still too much. A lot of it is they come here for to get out of the inclement weathers. I mean, Austin's, you know, Texas weather is brutal, the heat. It, when it gets cold, they need somewhere to sleep. Um, they come here to use their computers, and believe it or not, they feel safe here with knowing security is here. They feel they can come in here and be themselves and not have to worry about being robbed when they're on the street. They're getting, you know, when they're out there in the street, they're getting robbed, they're getting beat. A lot of times, uh, so they feel safe being here, knowing that we have, you know, the resource we have. Ca they know we have cameras here, and they know we have security. Uh, but they know also know that we respect uh, the fact that they're here and, and that they know their boundaries. But that we also they're they're also part of our we provide safety for everybody to come to the library and security. I've seen that working with the Challenger newspaper that we get some new people coming in because they're like, what do I do? I don't know how to get out of this thing, and they've just realized that they're homeless and they aren't sleeping and they, they actually now look homeless and they've been staying on their sister-in-law's sofa and now that's worn out and they can't stay there and they can't go back home. Their family is like, well, you haven't gotten a job. And um, so they're just realizing that they're homeless and um, it's hard to function. And so if you're just not getting sleep, we need more shelters with beds. We need day sleeping because, you know, we want them to all go get jobs. But if you sit in their shoes and you don't have a clean outfit on and you haven't showered that day, you can't act confident. On my first day here, one of the other interns had me like, you know, we stand up at our, from our table and we greet them and we say good morning and look them in the eye and, and really engage them. And that I actually, I think about that every day because really when you look at them, that changes them as well. Like saying something negative changes them, 
and saying something positive changes them in a whole nother way. It's like they stand like taller and they they smile. They definitely love to hear you say good morning. Like that means a lot to them. And that's the easiest thing in the world, you know? I do that to my dog, to my mom. So saying hi or smiling or just anything, that can really change a person and get their spirit going. And if you think that your community, you know, sees you and wants you to succeed, you probably will be in a better place to do that. To get past the moral bankruptcy and actually be fiscally responsible because it can be seventeen to $35,000 a year per person to ticket them, police them, send them to court, jail, prison, ER visits with the ambulance rides and hospital stays can be up to 35000 per person when to house them is $61 a day in Austin and then have a caseworker looking over them to help them do those baby steps getting in. So theoretically, we could have less homeless people in the libraries that way, but maybe we'll get one of the shower trucks to pull up a couple times a week in the parking lot of the library and people can also clean up. Last year on Veterans Day, someone approached me and said, oh, you're closed on Veterans Day? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I'm a veteran and I have nowhere to go. Um, so I think that speaks volumes to the, the value of the library. If, the, if they were just closing, oh, that wouldn't be good. That, would, that, would, that wouldn't be good. I thought, that, you know, that's kind of like um, <laughs> part of my constitution anyway. There should be a library. <laughs> so <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> that would be very bad. You know, honestly, I don't even know. I don't even know what it would be like. It would be weird because probably wouldn't have anywhere to go. I've never even thought about that. That's just... Wow, it would be, it would be hard. <laughs> it would be really hard. We, oh, I've never thought about that. It'd be really hard. <laughs> Catastrophic. There are some people that go there and say, for instance, if you're homeless, it's a sanctuary. If you're looking for information, It's, it would be catastrophic. I can't, I can't explain it. I can't imagine something like that happening. It, it would be very difficult because this is, was the first library that I found when I came to this town. And I know that there are others here. This is kind of sort of comfortable. You know, I can put all the things that I need to do here. I have people around me. Um, extended family members that I feel comfortable with, I feel, you know, safe with, and they feel safe with me. And, you know, we get to, we chop it up, and we brainstorm and try to come up with different things. This is a, for me, it would be, it's a, a, a focal point in my day. Even if I only come here just to check my emails and be gone. Uh, do out job interviews or whatever. Come in before they close, check the emails, charge your phone, go about my business. So yeah, it would be a whole, not only in my, in my, my existence, but a lot of other people that are trying to move forward. One thing I can say is, you know, I, am, I, I enjoy this, I enjoy all the libraries. I think Austin is doing a fairly, a great job with um, the resources that they provide, how the, the libraries provide for the people that come in here, you know. It's, it's not just a place for sitting back reading, whatever. You can get into some interactive stuff here and it's a great thing and a great place to be.